Shalom, giving all praises, honor, glory, and worship. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Greetings and salutations to you, Achim, upholding the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, in truth and in sincerity. And as you can see before you, what a time we're living in. And the articles are robust, it's an abundance of them regarding the topic, the matter at hand, which this lesson should have been done days ago. Uh, but I am um, now getting the opportunity to do it. Let's go with the Guardian. Russia warns of immediate proportional response if Britain continues its direct provocations of Ukraine as it happened. Now, the proportional response, which let me go to a different article, actually, because they're trying to put some sugar on what's taking place, I, I believe. Let's see, let's go to the sky. Let me see. It's, they're putting too much sugar on it. Here we go, right here. This is a good one. Russian state TV threatens to destroy whales with giant tidal wave. But no goddamn whales. The whole Britain. These guys are pissing me off. And that's why they're about to be destroyed. Trying to downplay the destruction that is at hand. Let me see here. I just had a beautiful article. Let me see. Yeah, well, we can go with this top one right here. It says, Russia chief propagandist threatens to plunge UK into depths of the sea. And that's through the Poseidon missile in which they possess. It says, um... <clears throat> I definitely want to get some direct uh, quotations. Let's see here. It says, uh, Russia state media has urged President Vladimir Putin to wipe the UK off the map using his most powerful nuclear weapons. Dmitry Kis Kisilov, a man often known as Putin's mouthpiece, used his Sunday's night show to call for attacks on the UK with a Sidon missile, pardon me, with a Sidon underwater drone that he said would trigger a 1,600 feet radioactive tidal wave and plunge Britain into the depths of the ocean, the Daily Mail reported. The drone has capacity for a warhead of up to 100 megatons. Kasilov, Kasilov claimed and added that it also has several thousand times the strength of a bomb dropped on Hiroshima, which would raise a giant wave, a tsunami, up to 640 feet high, enough to reach half up scale field pipe, the tallest point in England. Mm. It says, um, speaking, ag speaking against a background graphic showing the UK being erased from the world map, Gesevov added, this tidal wave is also a carrier of extremely high doses of radiation. Surging over Britain, it will turn whatever is left of them into radioactive desert. Unusual for anything, do you, um, pardon me, it says, un." Uh, unusable for anything. How do you like this prospect? <laughs> Talking wet. Uh, let's see here. And I actually want to get some more direct because I I remember when he actually said it. I want some because he, I want some more direct quotations of what he said. Actually, let's see here. I want 
want some more direct quotations, actually, because what he said was very vehement. Is that trying to actually lighten it up, if I may? Let's see here. You know UK is going to try to lighten it up. Let's see. And I'm going to get some scriptures after this. Президент Путин привел наши ядерные силы сдерживания в особый режим несения дежурства. Попросту говоря, мы сейчас на готове. А что будет после слов Бориса Джонсона об ответном ударе по России? Вообще на Британских островах, похоже, заговариваются. Зачем грозить ядерным оружием бескрайней России, сидя на, в общем-то, маленьком острове? Остров столь мал, что лишь одной ракеты «Сармат» достаточно, чтобы его утопить раз и навсегда. Все уже подсчитано. Другой вариант – погрузить Британию в морскую пучину российский подводный робот-беспилотник «Посейдон». Он приближается к цели на километровой глубине со скоростью 200 км в час. Нет никакого способа остановить этот подводный дрон. Боеголовка на нем мощностью до 100 мегатонн. Взрыв этой термоядерной торпеды у берегов Британии поднимет гигантскую волну, цунами высотой до 500 метров. Такой водяной шквал является еще и носителем экстремальных доз радиации. Пройдя над британскими островами, он превратит то, что от них может быть еще и останется, в радиоактивную пустыню, надолго непригодную хоть для чего-то. See? And you see the words out of the horse's mouth were a lot more um, astir, if I may. You know, they tried to grab some quotations here and there to lighten up. No, this, these Russians are not playing. And they um, have biblical prophecy backing them. So if you step to them, you're going to lose or you're going to lose bad. <laughs> you're going to lose bad. Let's um, get some scriptures. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 1. And remember, he's known as the mouthpiece of Putin. So this is Putin saying this, man. All right. It says, um, Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of Yahweh as the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. All right. Now, pardon me. Give me one second. Right? And so who's the king? The king is Putin. Of the, he's the king of Russia. He's the king of, he's the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. All right? He's the, he's the king of Moscow. Moscow. All right? You know? And his heart, his mind, the mind of Putin is being guided by the Heavenly Father to fulfill his purpose. All right, the, the mind of Boris Johnson and these idiotic Brit, uh, Brits to speak against him is being guided by the Heavenly Father to destroy them and to fulfill his purpose and his way. These, these um, suicidal Brits that are speaking against the Russians as if in a blink of an eye, they can't uh, be turned into aquamarine food. Or um, or th or be engraved into the coral reefs of the coastal isles of Britannia. All right. See, they're gonna learn. They're gonna learn very, very shortly, because the time is at hand. The time is indeed at hand. 
And ultimately, this is going to come back to America and Britain is going to hate America because it's America who's been pushing this war against the Russians. The, the Britons haven't been spearheading, spearheading it. It's been the Americans. And the European nations are going to detest America for pushing, because what America is using, Brit, um, pardon me, using Europe as a front line to fight against um, Russia. They're using the Europeans as front line, as a front line to fight to combat Russia. <laughs> you know, some type of ally, eh? You know, and what it seems is if these Brits are drunk off the new ale. That's, that's what it seems, to, to be speaking against Putin, a man backed by prophecy. How dare you? And you're going to lose. You better switch up your allies before you, um, before you're not. Before you, um, you cease. Before you, um, sabat. This is the book of Ezekiel, the 39th chapter, the first verse. Therefore, <clears throat> pardon me, so I can read accordingly. It says, therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against God, which the Lord's not with Russia, but he's with Russia. The Lord's not, he doesn't, Russia's not his man, but Russia his, 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 it, it, Russia has a purpose to fulfill in the grand scheme of things. Ultimately, Israel is his people, and Israel is in the and essentially Yahweh Bashem is um is our God, and and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. Yahweh Tazabawath Shamwa, the Lord of Hosts, is his name. All right. Now it says therefore. Thou son of man, prophesy against God and say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Verse 2, it says, I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee and will cause thee to come up from the north parts. As a matter of fact, let me go to verse chapter 30, 38. Um, this is Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 1. It says, And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against God in the land of Magog, showing you that it's not talking about the actual people of uh, Gog, as far as the Japhetic descendant, descending people, but it's talking about the people who dwell in that landmass or the vicinity of that landmass, which are the Russians. It says, the uh, son of man, set thy face against God, the land of Magog, which is Russia. It says the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him. And say, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And what, is, what does that mean? That means he's turning Russia back from that old Soviet Union era. From their old demean and rulership. Even when you go to RT, what, are, what does RT say? It says, it says, um, it says, um, essentially they'll say like Russia media. It says and the it says it says Russia and former Soviet Union. Because this modern day Russia has been turned back to that former Soviet Union mentality. Now the. The realization of the terrestrial domain hasn't been, you know, realized. But we see they're in the process of doing it now by trying to recapture and retake the Ukraine. And so that's a part of prophecy of Russia being turned back and the hook being put in their, and put in their jaw. Why? Because it's the Russians that are going to lead the charge to overthrow America with thermonuclear missiles. All right. It says, um, it says, I will turn thee back and put and put hooks into thy jaws and I will bring thee forth and all thine army. So the chicks, so the um, so the Chinese, so the Iranians. All right. So the um, 
Azerbaijan. So the Turks, you know, which I believe Azerbaijan's are Turks, you know? And so Uzbekistan, so Tajikistan, you understand? So Pakistan, you understand? So India. See, these nations are going to fight with and on behalf of the Russian um, juggernaut in this Third World War. It says horses and horsemen, which this is speaking of the tanks. This is speaking of the military hardware. All right. It says all of them clothed with all sorts of armor. Which is talking about, like I said, the military armor, the cavalry, if I may. It says, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. So man, fully strapped, AK-47, AK-74s, 100 rounds, drums, automatic weaponry, all right? All right anti-tank anti anti guns, all right? You know... Uh, rocket propel launchers, things of that nature. Um, as World War II, they call it Stalin's organs. Well, in the World War III, they'll call it Putin's organs. And you can look that up. And Putin will let out his organs on his adversaries. And that's, that's what it speak of, speaks of when it says with bucklers and shields, which that's going into their, their, their missile defense system, the S-300, the S-400. It says all of them handling swords, Persia, which Persia is speaking of the Iranians. It says Ethiopia, which we know that the Russians and with the Wagner group, all right, and as, as well as the Turks, they have allegiance with the Eritreans, with the Ethiopians, which the Turks will fight alongside with Russia in this Third World War. It says, um, all of them, it says, and Libya, it says, with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer, which Gomer is speaking of Turkey. All right, the Turks. All right, it says, and all of his bands, which all of his band is Azerbaijan, it's Turkmenistan, it's Uzbekistan. You know, it's these, these different Turco, Turco descent nations and, and regions. I'll venture to say the Czechs, I'm not sure if the Czechs are Turks or not. Regardless, the Czechs fight on behalf of the Russian Federation Right now, they're actually in Ukraine fighting with, on behalf of Putin right now. So you can include them as well. It says the house of Tokrma of the North Quarters and all of his bands and many people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself. Thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee. And be thou a guard unto them. And Russia is being a guard unto these nations. A protector. We see an aspect of that being shown with the deployment of the S-400 missile defense system into um, Turkey by the Russians. Well, that's an aspect of them being a guard unto them. Let me get some more scriptures. Let's go to Revelations. This is the book of Revelations, the 20th chapter. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 20, <clears throat> verse 8. It says, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. Which this is speaking of the beast infrastructure, but it also coincides with the um, the Russians as well. 
because the Russians, are, though they're not a part of the beast infrastructure, when I say the beast, I'm speaking of the NATO EU uh, infrastructure and alliance. They are Edomites and they are the devil. They're Satan and they are deceivers, which just the term Satan means deceiver. They are the physical counterpart of the spiritual demon Satan, as brothers like to say, which is very true and is a very eloquent way to put it. The same way we are the um, physical counterpart of the spiritual God, Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai. That's why it says, ye are gods. It's talking about the Israelites. And it says, and where the place where it said, ye are not my people, there you should be called the sons of the living God. And what is a son of a God? It's a God. He's a, it's a descendant of a God. Now, the Egyptians are man and not God. And their horses and chariots are flesh and not spirit. And the Egyptians would be modern day Americans. And they, are, they think that they themselves as to be a God. And they do have this, this God-like technology, but they not that though. And so that's why um, it was said in the book of Exodus and also Paul quoted it in the book of Romans uh, as it was as it was for Pharaoh, even for this cause have I raised thee up. And he was speaking in the book of Romans, the ninth chapter, it was actually speaking of Esau. You go to the 13th verse, it says, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. What should we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. So the Lord raised Esau up. The Lord raised the Americans, NATO, EU. He raised the Russians up. He raised the Turks up. Um, so his name could be known and they can get a stain uh, on his enemy, a stain on his raiment. And that's, what do, what do I mean, the stain on his raiment? Well, we'll get there in Isaiah. Just give me one second. <clears throat> and it's, it, it will be on his vesture. But um, it says, um, And shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And that's what we were just reading out, reading about, pardon me, in the previous, uh, in the book of Ezekiel, those many, that, that great host, all right, that's those who are going to be fighting with allegiance with Russia in this third world war. But let's get how Yahweh Shah is going to have a stain on his raiment, but he's still going to be... He's still going to be clean and pure, and, with, and he's going to be in all white. But his, his, but his, his garment is going to be, um, let me see. I'm a, that's an Isaiah, I believe. Oh, well, we can got one in Revelations too. It says, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. All right. And so the scripture says his vesture is going to be dipped in blood. So let me see. It's also one in um, Isaiah. I believe it's in Isaiah, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, right here. Got him. This is um, Isaiah chapter 63. Yeah, I knew it was chapter 63. Verse um, <clears throat> verse um, 1 for context. Say, it said, who is that that coming from Edom? And the Russians are Edomites. The Americans are Edomites. Uh, the, the NATO EU infrastructure are Edomites. The Turks are Edomites. It says, who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozra? And Edom meaning coming from the midst of fighting with those people. It says, this that is glorious in his apparel, travailing in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? And thy garments like him that treadeth the wine in the wine fat. I have trodden the wine press alone. And, the, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments and I will stain all my raiment. 
That's my shot. And he's going to get a stain. And he's going to get a stain when he, um, when he checks the Edomites at his return. You know, they say, oh, well, we're not Edomites. Well, you don't have anything to worry about then. Or do you? It says, um, verse four, it says, for the day of vengeance is in mine, is in mine heart. And the year of my redeemed is come. And so the redemption of the nation of Israel, we are in that hour. We are indeed in that hour. It says, and I looked and there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me. In my fury, it upheld me. It says, and I will tread down the people in my anger and make them drunk in my fury. And I will bring down their strength to the earth. I will mention the loving kindness of Yahweh. And the praises of, Yah of Yahweh, according to all that Yahweh hath bestowed unto us, and the great goodness toward the house of Israel. So the goodness is towards the house of Israel, not other nations, but the nation of Israel. It says, which he, and, and the nation of Israel is scattered throughout the four corners, man. It says, which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindness. Mm. Beautiful. Let's get some more scriptures. Let's go to the book of Joel. Joel chapter 3 verse 9 it says proclaim ye this among the gentiles prepare war wake up the mighty man let them let all the men of war draw near let them come up beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears let the weak say i am strong so when it says beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears take the finances that you've been using for agriculture to um, make a more robust civilization and put it towards your military spending, put it towards missiles, put it towards um, gearing up your soldiers and, and military um, uh, modernization and advancement. So you can understand and be some people, they say, be a pruning shoes pruning hook into a spear. And you see, you're just a wandering star and the scriptures were deeper than what you thought. Verse 11, it says, assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathens, all you nations, all of these nations, and gather yourselves together round about, thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh. And so thither call, so the Lord's going to bring these heathens into the Middle East, to the Levant, and from there he's going to cause the mighty ones, which are the angels in Yahweh, shall to come down to fight them. It says, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Yahweh, or Jehoshaphat, Otherwise known in the Hebrew, Yahushapat, it says, For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. And we were just reading Isaiah the 63rd chapter, and it says, Yahusha is going to tread, he tread the, the, the grapes as with the wine fat. And he said he had a stain on his raiment. And it's talking about the blood of the nations, the blood of the armies, and the kings, and the, um, the generals, and the captains. And Jeremiah, the um, 50th chapter and the 51st chapter speaks of that very well as well. He says, um, come, get you down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of Yahweh is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. That's because the, the spaceships or the, the fathership, as you may they're going to blot out the sky. Also, from the nuclear um, missiles, the, that smoke is going to blot out the sky. All right? This is, um, let's see here. It's withdraw their shining. And that's also speaking of the wisdom being taken away. The, um, they're not going to have any answers. Verse 16, it says, it says, um, Yahweh also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, meaning from his people. It says, and the heavens and the earth shall shake, but Yahweh will be the hope of his people. See, there we go. It says, and the strength of 
of the children of Israel. So in this hour, Yahweh Bashim is going to be our strength, man. Verse 17, so shall ye know that I am Yahweh, your God, dwelling in Zion, meaning dwelling in the midst of his people, in, in the hearts and in the minds in the, of his people. My holy mountain, which the holy mountain is speaking of his sacred government. That's what that's a cold term for a sacred government, which is the elect of the nation of Israel. A mountain represents government. That's why they call um, the UN summit. A summit is the top of a mountain. It says, then shall Jerusalem be holy and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. Right. It's not going to be any heathens passing through our land when we're restored back into it through the coming of our Lord. Verse 19, I'm skip down. Verse 19, it says, Egypt should be a desolation in which Egypt is talking about America. Um, it says, and Edom should be a, a desolate wilderness. All right. Which these Edomites rule America. And these in the in the and essentially America is, is what this land message is speaking of. It says for the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land. Right, that's what they did. They shed shed our blood even to this day. It says, but Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem shall, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. And we know this is not talking about the actual land mass of Edom because it's going to be given to Benjamin. That landmass is going to be prosperous. That's going to be a part. That's a part of the landmass of the promise for us, the, the the ancient land of Petra and that that vicinity in Jordan, that the modern day Jordan. No, that's not going to be desolate. That's going to be inhabited. Um, verse twenty one. It says, "For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for Yahweh dwelleth in Zion." So with that, I'm gonna give all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakotash. The unseen elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to you, Akim. Shalom and keep the faith.